right, hey, what's up everybody? This is Gratuitous from BeatStruggles.com. In this video, uh, I wanna show you guys how to quickly save your sounds. Um, you know, when I was first starting up, many times I would create um, like a sound effect or, you know, I just kind of create a sound where it was like, oh, that's really catchy. I would like to save that for later. Um, how I do it is uh, with Edison. Um, so what I've done here is I've just created just a little um, sound effect, a little kind of riser, and that's what we're gonna be working with. Um, so first of all, in order to record the sound, uh, I'll let you guys listen to it, but what you want to do is you want to extend your sound so that it can actually play out the whole sound rather than it just kind of keep looping. So um, I'll play this, I'll let you guys listen. So I would use this as like a riser, let's say like before like the chorus or something like that. But in order to record that, I would extend the actual pattern. So as you can see, like the actual note the note ends here, but it actually continues on for a little bit so that it allows like the reverb and like the delay to play out. So we'll listen to that um, with it extended. Okay, so I could even go a little bit longer so I can capture like the, the full delay. But um, so here in Edison, what I'll do is um, you can either click the slot and open up Edison right through here. Um, I usually find that I'll hold down Control and E a little shortcut it just kind of opens it up for you it opens it up on the actual insert that you're currently on so for example let's say we're on v2 and you hold down control and e um i'll close it but as you can see on verse 2 it opened it up edison right there so i'm just going to remove that go back to the master so also another thing uh, that i like to do with edison is i like to have it as like pretty much like the last effect in the, the my master chain and that's because like when you're listening to that sound, you're actually hearing it through the master. So if the, so if Edison was like on like the, uh, the actual sounds insert channel, you might be recording the sound at a different stage from what you're actually hearing it at, you know? So for example, you're hearing it and you want to record it exactly as you hear it. But if you record it earlier on in the chain, you might not be recording it exactly as you're hearing it. So here um, on the master, again, I have it on the very, very last effect on my master chain, even after like the limiter, even if you want to like, you know, limit it or whatever, you could put it there. Or that's up to you just to kind of keep that in mind about, um, you know, where you place Edison does matter as you record your sounds. Um, so here we're going to open up Edison. Now here, um, these are different options you can choose to record. I usually find for myself, I usually like it either on input or input. I think when it's like on input, so for example, if I hit record right here, it is not going to record until I hit a note. So for example, I have Harmer selected right there. If I hit a key on my keyboard, it records that, okay? Um, now I think on input, um, I think when I hit it, it, it'll just keep recording as soon. So as soon as Edison gets input, such as when I hit the note, I think it's just going to continue to record, um, you know, for as long as until you stop it. Okay. So I'll hit new. If you go input, it still does like that same thing. So it's waiting for some input for Edison to start recording. As soon as it takes some input, it's going to record. But as soon as it stops getting input, it stops recording for you. So um, some pros and cons to this is sometimes um, if you're delay, for example, like in this sound, you know, we have like our, our sound, the delay, some more delay, delay, and it keeps getting smaller and smaller in volume, right? Well, what happens with on input is sometimes that delay can get chopped off. So um, those are just kind of some pros and cons. Many times I'll usually just go on input. And then if the sound does go long, you can always just kind of like, you know, trim the taste kind of thing. Um, but I'll show you guys how uh, I will record this sound. And then what I do here in Edison, uh, just to kind of like fine tune the sound to kind of like maybe like uh, remove some of the unwanted dead space because um, I'll, I'll explain that later. But um, so here we go. So I have the sound. Um, it is on the master. It's as my last effect, even after the limiter in this case. Um, so I'll hit record. So it's waiting for the input. And as soon as I hit play here, it's going to record this. So um, I might turn down the volume so that like I'm not like clipping the sound, you know, I want the sound to be, you know, have its normal transients and stuff like that. And then 
if I was processing this actually in a song or something like that, then I would have the freedom to clip it if I wanted to and stuff like that. Again, I lowered it by about six decibels. And now uh, even before I record this sound, let's just listen to it. Let's just see um, where it is. So. Okay, so that's good. So I'm just gonna hit new. So I'm just gonna hit record here. We're gonna play the sound. Just let it play out. Now, another thing you wanna be careful of is just sometimes that will just keep looping over and over and over. And if you have a sound that has lots of reverb and delay, um, you're not gonna be able to capture that full tail because it's just gonna repeat and it kind of destroys your tail. So um, after it goes, you can kind of stop it, let that tail fade out, and then you have captured your sound. So now what I was talking about earlier is with this dead space around here, like if we play it, there might be audio here. We'll listen. So see, I'm not seeing any, any green, any kind of audio. So we'll go back a little more. So see, there is a little bit there. Okay, you can see the green. Whereas if I go up to here, it's like that's just like the dead space. So I try to remove this dead space when I'm uh, saving sounds and stuff like that because um, I have a tutorial. It's on uh, using the in and out knobs here in FL Studio. So for example, I have just like this little kick drum that I've created. So I like to use these in and out knobs a lot for sound design. Um, I would really highly recommend watching that tutorial. It's, I don't know, I, this is a, my workflow, this is what I'll do. I'll hit normalize, I'll hit the trim up, and now I'll be able to fine tune this kick drum to whatever I want. Um, I might not even use this as a kick drum, this might be some kind of percussion element in, in my track. But whereas if I would leave that dead space, I'm not able to totally fine tune with the in and out knobs. That's just a personal preference and that's the reason why I would delete a lot of the dead space there. Um, and then from here, what you can do, there, there's two options. Um, again, you wanna be careful with this one. So uh, you hit like the wrench there, sorry, the, the wrench. And then you can trim up the side noise. So for example, if we click this, as you can see, it's trimmed it up. Something you wanna be careful here of though is because your reverb tail um, sometimes it chops that off in an unnatural way. So um, how you can get around doing that is uh, you can click here and you could fade it out to kind of make it sound a little more natural. You can either do that by I think clicking the wrench here and going fade out or I usually just hit Alt F, it's a shortcut. So for example, if we just hit Alt F, you're gonna see me fade that out. So you could do it that way, but sometimes like I'm saying, uh, if you um, trim that side noise like I did there, it can make your tail sound unnatural, whereas maybe you wanted that long tail. So all I would do is I would just click here, drag to the end, and I click delete, not backspace, the actual delete button deletes it. And then you can uh, just zoom in here. You just zoom in with the scroll wheel, that's it. You know, maybe I'll click around like here or something like that. And what I'll do is when I'm zoomed in, I'll click and highlight just a little bit, I'll back out, and then you can click further on, and then you can continue on. Because sometimes it's hard to click exactly um, where you want sometimes like um, you know sometimes you want to get like right into like the middle of the sound and um, if you click in between not on an actual transient sometimes you can get a click so sometimes you want to zoom in kind of get it let's say like here something like that and then you can so see like right there like that kind of screwed it up so what I would do is I'd zoom in I double click try and get it on that that's as close as I can get right now. So like I'll click around there, I'll click on it again, and then I'll be able to highlight it. I'll back out a little bit, and then I could like, you know, work off of that now over there. But for example, right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna like click around here. It kinda looks like the sound begins around here. I don't know, maybe around here. Good enough, just to be safe. And then um, I'll take all this, move in maybe a little bit, and I'll just like delete that edge there. And then I think that's probably good around here. Okay, so um, now it's up to you. You can either keep it in 32-bit or 16-bit. I'll usually actually keep it in 16-bit, but sometimes I forget and drag it in 32-bit. Um, you know, it's just it's just like a, I guess a higher quality if it's in 32-bit. But at the end of the day, it usually gets down uh, converted down to 16-bit anyways when you know you're putting it on like a CD and stuff like that. Um, now what I'll do here, depending on what I'm doing. Um, for example, if I'm working with like a drum loop, so if I used Edison to record a drum loop, I just right click here, this pops up. I would put in the tempo, so whatever this tempo is, because you know, if you're gonna chop up drum loops later on or something, I would put let's say like 90 BPM and then name the drum loop like, you know, random 
DL or like for drum loop or something like that, right? I would do that. And then whenever I click and drag the sound around, that name follows it rather than getting these weird strings like I've done here. So like one day I, I must've been doing some sound designing and I wasn't caring about labeling. I was just simply just click, drag, click, drag. And that's what um, it can end up looking like if you don't label it. So here, this is a kind of a rising sound effect. So let's just go like riser um, SFX one, something like that. Okay. You can even put a comment in there. Um, whatever you want to do, that's up to you, but I'll just title it like that and accept it. So now what I do from here is now this is why it's really good to have um, a folder for your own sounds that you can acquire and, you know, um, build up sounds for yourself as a producer, as you go along in your production career. So right around here. So, so I have, I have a sound effects folder. This will be the sound effect. So I'll click it. You know, I have all these other ones, like ones like these, like, So I've just made sounds like that just by doing this. So what I'll do now is I'll click the arrow with the kind of file looking thing and I'll be able to just click and drag it in there. And so where is it? it should be R riser right there, right? Listen to it in Edison. And that's pretty much the process of saving your own sounds uh, in FL Studio. So, um, you know, again, when I was first starting up, sometimes I kind of found it tricky and stuff like that. But the whole process is just put Edison as the last insert on your master channel. That way you are recording what you're actually hearing. Um, you can kind of fine tune the actual recorded audio by like trimming like the dead space because then you could take advantage of like those in and out knobs like I was showing you. Again, check out that tutorial. Um, if you wanna label it, you can do that and then just click this and just simply just drop and drag it into the actual folder here or the actual browser here in FL Studio. And um, you guys are good to go. Um, you know, as you can see, I have like my own sounds here and I just, as I make sounds, I'll just kind of keep dragging them in there. And then you just keep building up your own catalog of sounds. Um, so I'm Gratuitous, this is beatstruggles.com. Hopefully this helps you out. If you have any questions, uh, just leave them in the comments and head over to Beat Struggles and you guys can check out my premium uh, music courses, all right? So I will talk to you later.